Yes, it is. Thank you, Marika. So it's so uh, we've got a great lineup of experts with us today, both from said the service providers and the researchers and academics working in the field. It's my pleasure now to welcome the first of the panelists, um, Jan Belston, head of the Department for Communication of Archival Data at the Danish National Archives. Um, Jan also represents Denmark in CESDA's Service Provider Forum. So welcome, Jan, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Let's see if we can find my presentation. All right, so uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, greetings from cold Copenhagen. Today, I'm going to talk to you about data for research and reuse in the system data catalog from the Danish National uh, Archives uh, pertaining to circular economy. And I would be lying if I said that it was uh, absolutely no problem to find data regarding this uh, issue. So we had to look uh, closely to find the relevant data. Of course, this issue is really relevant. Obviously, anything related to the environment, climate change, recycling, the entire circular economy is of really great importance for our world today. And one of the really burning issues for, I guess, for all mankind today is to find a way to develop a more sustainable way of life. And to develop a more sustainable way of life than what we're doing right now uh, will, of course, require a lot of research. It will require research in technological solutions that can help us um, prevent climate disaster. But it will also require uh, research into the issue of how we change the way we all think about issues regarding circular economy, environment, climate change, uh, et cetera. So the task was to find data in the archives that can support and enhance that really necessary research, uh, and especially, of course, from a uh, social science uh, perspective. At the Danish National Archives, which is the, the Danish uh, service provider in, uh, in SESTA, we have a born digital collection that includes both the research data, especially surveys, and uh, administrative and governmental data. So that is probably something that's, uh, if not unique, then at least a little bit unusual in a SESTA context that we have a born digital collection that covers both um, survey data uh, and data from uh, the government administration. And what you can find uh, from our collection in the SESTA data catalog is of course currently uh, the survey data sets. And that will also be the focus of my talk this afternoon. But I think it's very important to remember that those surveys, they can be used together with other sources, other types of data. And in our case, we would of course say government data, but you could also probably find uh, a number of other sources. Uh, so I think that's important to keep in mind that the survey data sets that we do have in our collection and that you can find in the SESTA data catalog is one thing, but it can be um, seen in combination with other types of data. Uh, and so you get a richer insight in uh, the issue at hand. Some of the uh, data sets that, uh, that we found here at the Danish National Archives when we were contacted and asked if we could say something about data regarding circular economy uh, are surveys like the ones you can see on the screen right now, one called Moral Norms and environmentally significant consumer choices. Um, two versions of the Danish Environment Survey, ISSP, that is a survey that has been done, I think in 47 different countries. Um, we have one called Pro Environmental Consumer Behavior and Young Adults Consumer Socialization, the development of a sustainable consum consumption pattern in Denmark and Danish youth and climate uh, change. Now, uh, these surveys, as you can see, uh, are all 10 to 20 years uh, old. Um, and I'm sure that they would provide a really interesting background for any follow-up survey. What has happened to the moral norms, to the way that consumers behave, to the choices that young people make um, with their consumption, et cetera, uh, related to climate change. I'm sure that if you made uh, a, a new survey of, in many of these cases, you would find uh, that 
things have developed over the years because so much has happened since um, these surveys were made 10 to 20 years ago. One of the examples that I found is called the Danish Environment uh, Survey. And I just took some screenshots from the, um, from the SESTA data catalog. So you can see uh, in the SESTA data catalog, you can find the title of the study. You can find who created it, data, you have an, an ID and you can get uh, an abstract of what the, the survey is about. You will be able to find some information about the methodology behind the survey, when data were collected uh, and how uh, the data collection procedure went on. And something that's really uh, neat for a researcher is that you can also find uh, topics, the topics that it pertains to, as well as keywords. So if you have found one study that you find relevant and interesting to whatever it is that you want to, um, to study, you will be able to search for and find other types of data sets that have the same keywords. So I think that's a really uh, important part of why it's a good idea to have your data in the SESTA data catalog and why it would be a good idea for uh, researchers to look in the SESTA data catalog because it is a very unique opportunity to find surveys that pertain to the same types of, uh, of, um, of issues. Also, again, a really neat feature in the SESTA data catalog is uh, the similar results uh, section where you can find uh, data sets surveys that are similar to the one you have uh, found in the catalog. In this case, uh, we can see that we have the Danish environment uh, study from 10 years earlier, but also environment st studies from Sweden, Finland, and, uh, and Norway. As I said, this is a type of survey that has been conducted in, in 47 different countries. And certainly here we can see that uh, it might be relevant uh, and interesting to do some cross-national um, surveys here. You can see how people have actually answered the questions in, in, in four different, uh, four different um, Scandinavian countries or Nordic countries. I'm certainly not going to go through all the surveys, but just to give you an idea of the kinds of questions that people have been asked, uh, could be something like, is it hot or not to buy new electronic devices? This is from the one about youth and climate change. Is it hot or not to buy and own your own car, for instance? And uh, we can see that uh, a majority of youth uh, or young people find that it's hot to buy new devices. It's hot to own your own car, but also an overwhelming majority of the, the young people that have been asked find that the Danes have a tendency to overconsumption. Um, in some of the other surveys, you have questions like how often do you buy detergent or toilet paper that has an environmental label? How often do you let your kitchen waste go to uh, compost rather than to incineration? How often do you recycle glass and bottles? How often do different family members try to influence each other to take uh, environmentally correct choices with regards to consumption, energy, recycling, etc.? cetera? Um, also, are you a member of a group that has uh, environmental concerns as its main purpose? Um, how often do you choose to conserve water for uh, out of concern for the environment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are so many different questions, but the main point is that these survey, they give us a really valuable background to understand the actual developments in consumption, the actual developments in recycling, the actual developments in waste management, management and the policies that have been enacted and developed in the various countries. Now, social science is often about seeing people's opinions and preferences and behavior or self-reported uh, uh, behavior and see how that reflects in the actual um, development of society. So we have in these surveys, and I'm sure many other surveys, a lot of background information to understand what has actually happened.
And to put this in perspective, I would like to mention uh, something called the waste data system, which is an example of government data that we have in our collection. Because in this waste data system, the government has, con has uh, collected information about waste, how it has been collected, processed, recycled, exported, et cetera, et cetera. And one thing I think could be really interesting would be to see how things have actually developed over the years and to compare that with what people have asked uh, have been asked and what they have answered in those surveys about their behavior what is their behavior as they see it as opposed to what can we see in the actual data about what has happened this is at least something i think could be really interesting and just to um to again stress the point that survey data could often be seen together with other types of data to create the most uh, valuable research. And I guess that was uh, my 10 minutes for now. And I don't know if we take uh, questions now or we can take them uh, later, Stephanie. We can take them all at the end. Yeah, thank you. All right, that's fine. Back to Marike. Thanks. Thank you very much. Very, very interesting.